villains. So this is going to be, we'll just tie it in together actually. So Dick Mantle's been cancelled too. Um, if you know that wasn't a surprise really, I guess. But I guess with the with the Dutch, I think everything is sort of interlinked the dutch eredivisie decided to kind of cancel or avoid the season because they're not going to be able to restart before september which then had a kind of ripple effect in other industries too with events planned so with deck mantle being you know sometime in august they all going to cancel it because there's no way they could do it before september at all uh but they've they've confirmed that they're going to postpone until next year with the same lineup same date which is not it's all right with them because by august everything should be okay by then next year and it says here deck mantle postponed festival to 2021 with the same lineup um the next amount festival will not take place in 2021 the amsterdam events 8th edition was pushed back to august 4th to 8th 2021 the festival announced today it was originally placed to go on from july to the august or july 29th to 2nd of august the official confirmation of the amount of 2020 comes two days after the dutch government extended the ban on public events from june the 1st to august 31st due to the corona pandemic so again i'm assuming amsterdam is doing a far better job than we are here in the uk so I don't know how they think we're going to do football and we're going to get things up and running by the fucking July if those guys are already postponing until August it just doesn't make any sense in addition to it's, the article continues in addition to remaining at the same May venue um, Amsterdam boss Doug Mantle's 2020 lineup featuring the likes of Theo Parrish uh, Lorraine James and Venetian Snez will also carry over to the 2021 festival it says here um, losing Dick Mantle Festival this summer does have a massive impact on our small team as well as other wider network of people we work with all year round musicians, artists, producers, partners, and countless freelancers. The statement reads As such, we would like to take this opportunity to ask you to continue showing empathy for and actively supporting our favorite artists, labels, venues, and all other initiatives in the creative sector wherever you can. We need each other more than ever at the time of unprecedented turbulence. Um, the Digmental Teams May event uh, Lenti Cabinet Has been cancelled And replaced with A one day festival In September Which is pretty cool Called Zuma Cabinet With a similar lineup. Um, I'd imagine Again Probably native people I think the people Within your country Are going to need to go But that's, the problem is That most festivals Are usually I don't know From my experience They're usually Populated By people That are from abroad Usually I'd imagine Right Especially the bigger ones um, So there's no guarantee those people they're, they're more unlikely to go because of maybe travel restrictions but maybe people that live um in your country might be willing to go that's probably it and again you know is it is it just worth the squeeze throwing that kind of event on Have the licenses the insurance the cost i don't know it continues here it says that meant to, uh, there's no word yet of whether the creation festival that meant to selectors will also be postponed and cancelled that's planned for august 27th to the 31st the, 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 so that's a statement they have there um they all kind of read the same really in a wider network of people but it's a good thing that they've kind of announced it early i think a lot of the stick a lot of the kind of negative replies on social about festivals not giving refunds is basically due to ambiguity right i think some of the first i think it's we're all aware that a lot of these places that organize these events most likely they're not they use the money they get from pre-orders and from pre-sales to fund the event that they're putting on any given year right they don't really have any means of like making money throughout the year they only make the money when they put the event on and when the lineups are confirmed which is why lineups are such a big deal with festivals because they're hoping if they secure a big act that's going to then translate to ticket sales so i think consumers are smart are savvy enough to realize that usually a lot of these festivals by the time they've done you know most of the pre they've got most of the tickets out of the way that money's already gone into paying people right keeping the thing running uh securing a deposit getting equipment sorted like we know that's, a, that's we know that's the case so we're aware that those people probably don't have the, our money in their account to refund us so we're all right to get a refund 24 days later but we just want to know where we stand so i think when some of these festivals just ignore the customers and just don't want to reply because they're afraid of letting people know they don't have the money that's when people start to get angry and skeptical i think we're all aware they don't have the money just allow people just give people the heads up ahead of time so that people can make the adjustments and more likely than not especially when it comes to festivals and stuff no one's really counting on getting that money back usually you're kind of making the uh especially uh, unless maybe you get re you know buyers protection or something you're sort of making a calculated risk because there's also a risk that your friends could end up flaking and you could have sold it on how many times have people booked a ticket with their friends in mind and then their friends have flaked and then you just had a dead ticket in your hand that you couldn't give away and then just give away for free at the end of it because you just want someone else to enjoy it happens more often than not i'd assume so it's not as if like people are desperately trying to get their money back because they have nothing left right especially in the 
um, in the run up to a festival, you've probably got a couple of paychecks you're still sitting on, you know, whatever. You've got maybe some savings you have, a little a little kind of pot that you saved for the actual festival itself. So you just need some transparency. So uh, good on um, Dick Mantle for being honest and just being upfront and saying how as it is. And I'm sure some people will be willing to donate the cost of their ticket to the team to make sure they support them for the next festival. And I'm sure some people will maybe do a partial donation. But when you're just upfront about it already now in April, you're letting people know, hey, we're not going to put this thing on. It's not going to happen. We're not pushing it. We're not postponing it to another day later in the year. It's going to be next year. If you want to keep your ticket for the next event, you can. If not, it is what it is. I think that's much better as opposed to just ignoring everybody and not giving anybody any insight what's going on. And then secondly, we have um, the clarification that all the events are going to be banned until the end of the month. So it says here, uh, Netherlands extends public events ban until August 31st. And its subtext is one of my employees accidentally ticked the pandemic box on the insurance form. DGTL tells New York Times we're trying, we're getting roughly 70% of Jesus, that's amazing. So that's the story. The Netherlands have extended the ban on public events due to the coronavirus pandemic until the August 31st. Um, and we still haven't got clarification on Notting Hill Carnival either. People, you know, no one said nothing about that, but if they think that's going to happen, oof, they're in for a big surprise. It says Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte announced that date change in the press conference on Tuesday. The New York Times reports the ban was previously set to be choose June the 1st and March 24th. The extension follows a suit with other European countries like Germany and Denmark, which also has banned large-scale events through to August 31st. So if the Bundesliga is back by May 9th and Germany are the ones going off, if you're really desperate, again, I wouldn't advise it. I would think you know you should give it some time, things to settle down. But if you're really desperate to go out, your best bet is going to be Holland, you know, as those countries have stated, right? Um, Holland, Germany. I mean, Netherlands, Germany and Denmark are going to be your best bets if you really want to go traveling and go, you know, partying and stuff. But I wouldn't advise it. I'd say just like give it some time before things settle down. But those are the three countries that are doing relatively well. Um, it continues here. Tom Veldeswis, 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 co-founder of um, Apping Koi Events, which runs DGTL, told the New York Times a financial toll cancelling the Amsterdam Festival over the Easter weekend could have taken it uh, if it weren't for an administrative accident wow he said when we were renew when we renewed our insurance policy one of my employees sort of accidentally ticked the pandemic box on the insurance form that's amazing and now we're getting 70 percent of our 2.3 million investment back otherwise it would have been quite a blow that's amazing i hope that person who ticked the box gets a nice you know gift and then if not a glass of wine give them a nice cash reward because that's amazing the amount of money they've saved there the new york times also spoke to dutch dj and producer Euros vaughn who says i'm pretty sure i won't be doing any gigs this year see that's what i'm saying and he's and this is a big dude right if we let's look at his profile and see how many gigs he played last year this is a big person saying he's pretty sure he's not going to play again this year and let's see his events fuck me look all these events that have been cancelled let's go in these events tab on ra scroll down yeah look look at all the stuff that he had planned uh august september let's go to like i don't know let's go to like march or let's go to january and see or yeah january see how many he played in january a couple there three events there maybe what's that six events there across one two three four five six different countries right so this is a touring person who's saying i'm not going to be playing again for the whole entire year so some of these people on social who are like oh we're going to party again in july they're absolutely smoking crack there's no way that's happening again this is a properly like established guy in the scene right who's saying this Mamma mia. Um, he said, yeah, I'm not complaining again. Number one, I fly around the world. Number two, I play in the front of tens of thousands of people, of course. So unless there's a miracle, I don't think these two things will be possible anyway this year. Perhaps not next year. Um, earlier this month, experts and officials in America said it's unlikely that those public events are concerts or sports or conferences will return before autumn 2021. So again, um, big up to them for sorting that out anyway. I, mean, I think that's a good deal. So um, yeah, end of the year for that one.